Jeep Cherokee makes a return to UK shores this year with an entirely new model, one that owes more to new parent company Fiat than it does to Chrysler. Starting with the platform that underpins Alpha's Giulietta means the new Cherokee is quite a radical departure from the models that have gone before, and nowhere is that more evident than in the styling. Some aspects are more successful than others, and while it offers familiar styling cues like the squared off wheel arches, it also introduces new themes such as the squinty front lights. However, it's the new look for Jeep's trademark 7-slot grille that divides opinion the most. The rear styling is less controversial, although to our eyes that large expansive metal in the new tailgate makes it look like something is missing, and it also has something of a drawback in that it makes rearward visibility a bit of a challenge. Inside, the cabin offers a respectable amount of space, although the driving position is a little more upright than some people will be used to, and the steering wheel appears to be angled away from the driver a touch too steeply, even when at its lowest setting, and this we found to be tiring on the wrists. The seats offer a useful amount of adjustment, power operated on top spec limited models, and there's the choice of what Jeep calls Morocco black leather if you don't fancy the blue and brown combo of our test car. There are some practical touches dotted around the cabin, such as the pop-up compartment on top of the dash, and the cubby under the centre armrest that's also home to various charging ports and a CD drive, plus a wireless charging pad on some models. The dashboard itself is modelled after that in the Grand Cherokee, and that's a good thing, although some of the materials aren't up to the same standard. The instruments are clear and offer a wide range of customization options for the central TFT display, while the centre stack is home to Jeep's Uconnect system that offers navigation as standard on all but the base longitude model, plus DAB digital radio, Bluetooth connectivity, and the ability to play music from your iPod, USB stick, or even an SD card. Rear seat passengers are reasonably well catered for, although models fitted with the optional sunroof offer somewhat restricted headroom. One curious feature is the ability to slide the rear seats forward. Normally this is to allow for more cargo space in the boot, but since sliding them forward means there's zero legroom, you might as well just fold the seats forward instead. An extra little annoyance here is that the headrests can't be removed, so once you've folded them forward, you can't slide the front seats right back. Limited models get a power tailgate as standard, and once it opens it reveals the 591 litre boot and the rather fiddly cargo cover. It has a pair of extra flaps that clip onto the headrests of the rear seats in an effort to conceal your belongings when you have the rear seat slid forward, but despite a large set of printed instructions, Jeep's idea of stowing it out of the way in reality just leaves it dangling in a slightly different but still annoying fashion. Of course you can remove it completely, but then there's nowhere else to put it. Under the floor is the compartment for the spare wheel, our test car coming with the option of a full-size wheel, and this does mean the boot floor is also quite high. Still, drop the rear seats and space increases to a creditable 1,267 litres with an almost completely flat floor, and there are a number of useful load hooks dotted around, plus Jeep's cargo management system complete with shopping bag hooks with rather neat detailing. In the UK, while a 3.2 litre V6 will be available for the special order Trailhawk models only, the rest of the range uses a 2 litre turbo diesel from Fiat with either 138 or 168 horsepower. The 138 horsepower version is only available with a 6 speed manual transmission, while the more powerful 168 version is mated only to a new 9 speed automatic. The latter is also four wheel drive only, while lesser models can be had in either two or four wheel drive spec making use of what Jeep calls its active drive system. It's coupled with their select terrain control, which allows you to switch between auto, snow, sport and sand mud modes. However, notice anything missing? That's right, there's no low range mode. That's reserved for the special order Trailhawk and an expensive high powered diesel model. Mechanically, it's a very simple system, relying on the electronic traction control to direct engine torque away from the spinning wheel by applying the brakes individually, and while that's fine for running about on a simple forest track, quite frankly, it's out of its depth on anything more challenging. The Cherokee's biggest problem though is poor ground clearance, with a maximum of only 157mm, a figure that's beaten even by a two-wheel drive Suzuki S-Cross, and even on this simple track that leads into our test ground, the Cherokee was dragging its belly on sections that wouldn't trouble any of its competitors. We also discovered a few situations where the traction control would try to apply the brakes to a spinning wheel so aggressively that it caused the engine to stall and after we grounded out on a rutted track that caused the dashboard to light up like a Christmas tree, we decided to call it quits and head back into the tarmac. Here, unfortunately, there are a few issues too. 
The gear change on manual models is a little obstinate, with first to second especially reluctant to engage, and the somewhat oversized gear knob isn't particularly comfortable in the hand either. At higher engine revs, the diesel engines emit a rather coarse tone, while at lower engine speeds they fill the cabin with an uninspiring mooing sound, although they do at least settle down once up to speed. The 138 horsepower engine in our test model feels underpowered though, and in faster moving traffic it's not difficult to get left behind, a sensation that's backed up by the 12 second 0-60 time. In first gear, there's quite a substantial degree of driveline shunt that makes progress in stop-start traffic wearing, and we also found that the software that controls the electronic parking brake still needs a little work, as on more than one occasion while making a hill start, the Cherokee released its parking brake before we'd brought the clutch to biting point, resulting in an unexpected roll backwards towards the car behind. The brakes themselves have a reasonable amount of power, the only problem being the rather excessive amount of pedal travel and the slightly concerning number of clanking noises that accompany their application. The reason for this is evident once you open the bonnet. There, on the right hand side of the engine bay, is the brake servo, with a long bar stretching from one side of the engine bay to the other to link it to the pedal, resulting in an unhealthy degree of play. Out on the open road, the Cherokee has a rather choppy quality to its ride and an unfortunate lack of body control during cornering that upsets what would otherwise be a pleasantly calm ambience in its cabin. The steering too is almost entirely lacking in feedback, and while these two aspects don't necessarily make the Cherokee an unpleasant car to drive, it's a shame that Jeep's first foray into the world of using a car-based platform hasn't resulted in a matching set of road manners. There is one problem, however, that's bigger than all the rest, and I'm afraid that no amount of sugar coating will disguise the fact that the Cherokee is just too expensive. The range starts at £25,495 for an entry-level two-wheel drive model, with our 138 horsepower four-wheel drive test car coming in at 34370 If you want the 168 horsepower model with a low-range transfer box, you'll need to cough up £37,195. That's nearly the price of a Grand Cherokee, and I have to say, that's a much better car. To put those prices into perspective, the Nissan Qashqai starts at just over 18000 while something like a top-of-the-range Mazda CX-5 costs just over 29. Even a new Discovery Sport can be yours for a touch over 32 grand. I've been a Jeep fan for many years. I've owned more of them than I can count, and I've driven them not just through some of the thickest mud Britain has to offer, but also across the pond on the famous trails in Moab. All that means is that this next part really pains me to say, but the new Cherokee isn't a car that we can recommend. It's lacking in its on-road dynamics, offers poor off-road performance, and what's left is priced at a point that makes nearly every single competitor a much better option.